All right, welcome back to another week of Summer 2024 anime tier list where I judge the most recent episode, Monday being the cutoff, of how much I enjoyed it. And here is the selection of anime that just aired. Let's talk about Osan Nibi Adventure. And again, it's not today's episode, it's last week's episode. Bro, this shit is actually like... It may be peak. It, it, it really may be peak. It's either here or here. The animation quality, bro. This studio is killing it. It is absolutely killing it. I love everything that they're doing with this show. The way that the power fantasy is also handled is such a balanced way, right? Because most power fantasies, it gets boring once the main character just beats everything in one shot. Where's the fun in that? But it turns out the whole point of this show is, yes, Rick is OP. His crew is OP. But the story is driven through the side characters. And right now, well, the previous episode was Angie and how Rick was adapting to how strong Angie would be to show how Geese is useless to her with proper training. The champion and Broston battleman, Mr. Broston's obviously gonna win. Everyone knew that. But to see the champion's backstory of how he was being a professional and he was too tired of winning and he was worried for the gym and the coach and the miscommunication from what the coach wanted and what champion wanted to create a situation where he's like faking these battles to make us seem close but at the end of the day he showed his true self and it's a beautiful story of the champion getting a little bit closure and i'm like god damn this shit's so good and on top of that and on top of that the animation is good like <laughs> i feel like tower of god gets shit on every week and it deserves to get shit on every week tower of god is an amazing ip the series but the studio doing it does not know how to fucking animate shit, bro. Like, it's crazy how all the different animes airing right now, even Oishinoku, which is not even a battle show. <laughs> it's not even a battle anime. The theater battleship was better animated. But hey, you're competing with the Goku. But hey, I think I'll put this in peak for now. I genuinely fucking love this, man. And today's episode should be Mr. Broston versus Rick. So it's probably going to be just a hilarious episode then. All right. Next up. Let's talk about Perry. Perry was entertaining. And I think it was above average entertaining. I think that again, ever since the I Perry Dragon episode, I've been glazing this show. Until that point, it fucking pissed me off. And I get it. The whole point of this show is for Noor to be an idiot, to have one brain cell and then for his misinterpretation of what's going on to be the comedy, which is not funny most of the times, but recently, after pairing a dragon, the pacing has been so good in terms of, we beat the dragon, we parried the fucking empire's army, we then go to the empire and fuck them up, everyone is glazing Nor. Nor is heralded as like a champion now. It's looking great. There was also a very, very heart-touching closure with Rolo, the demon kid. And that demon kid backstory, man, Again, you would never expect it from a show like Perry, of Nord just being a dumbass, but they can touch upon very deep and heartfelt moments with Rolo, and the backstory was great. Great as in, it sucks that he suffers, but the fact that he now has a nice place to live, we've made him a citizen, we've acknowledged him, he gets to eat nice food, it's like, oh man. And this also leads in to the potential conflict with the church. Now there's a different kingdom, nation, place. I think we were supposed to go there during the attack on our, on our kingdom, right? And our brother said go there for sanctuary to kind of hide there. But now that we've accepted a demon kid, there's like even more stuff that's being set up. So it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Next up. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's talk about Wistoria. Wistoria? I don't... Was it peak? Was it peak? I'm not sure. I... 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 I feel like... The animation was all there, but there was no, like, crazy pop-off moment. It's just Will and Wignall self-mutually glazing each other. Shio and Julius... Competing, Liana, Colette, bonding. Sensei is looking cool. Headless shows up with the new guy, Marze or something. But before the real hype shit could go down, we kind of just 
got blue ball because they left and they left a new monster. Well, the old monster with this. So I feel like it's it's his top of grade. Yeah, I, I think it should be here. I think it should be there. Next up. Failure frame. Before failure frame, let's do something else first. No, let's do failure frame. Failure frame. Uh, eh? Or eh? Eh? Eh, what happened? Uh, we're in the land of the glowing-eyed monsters. We got a fucking horse that a hatched on the egg. The horse got huge and was doing such shit to Seras. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know, it's just... It's just I don't know, it, 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 what, was it mid or good? Cause like, I don't give a fuck about any of the monsters attacking us, it's pretty boring, right? There's no actual threat, we just go paralyzed poison, and that is the crux of having an OP character like, you know, Tuka that doesn't struggle with anything. And now at the end, they did show potential struggling, there's a horde of monsters coming for us, and we're in this narrow uh, path. What are we gonna do? Maybe it's gonna be really great next episode, but... Uh, uh. Uh, the Kitty Hata Ego was pretty funny. Yes, yes, setting that up. <laughs> Next episode, I feel like it's gonna be amazing. Everything is converging to one point. But the most recent episode was just kinda eh. Got the horse, just battling random dudes. That's pretty much it. I feel like it's, it's, it's here or here, I'm not really sure. Now, Roshtere. Roshtere, even though it did not have. Even though Rochtere did not have the classic Yuki Wincess scenes, it instead had more cold, ruthless Yuki. Same with Masachika. Two siblings showing their sociopathic tendencies that they learned from the Suo family. <laughs> Education, amazing. Just grooming these children to be fucking insane psychopaths <laughs> to dominate in politics. I'm not really sure. But I, I did love the... Um, the setup that Yuki did to get Alia and then playing her for all she got and Masasuka just quote unquote being drugged by Yuki and not realizing what's going on. There was some funny Ayana moments as well, but I did genuinely love how Yuki and Masasuka, they're just like competing against each other and Alia is just kind of in the background doing nothing. But I feel like Alia will serve an integral role. And I think last episode was pretty good in highlighting the actual core plot of the show and what it actually is. Rather than having Yuki just say some random Wincess joke and everyone just amazing, wow, oh my god, it's so peak, and the video hits for 20,000. It's just... It is just so... disheartening? I don't know. When Roshteri hits for like above 10k the first week, it feels great. But the pattern of behavior I see is that that shit only happens when Yuki does some dumb Wincess shit and never actual plot related shit. Which kind of makes me lose faith in like the anime fandom and who was watching <laughs> Roche today with me. But I'm glad that the last episode's response was great. We actually played into the themes of the actual story. And they're setting up a pretty interesting uh, clash, right? Between Yuki and Masatsuka, or should I say Alia, for the future. Next up. Tensura. I put this shit in peak, bro. I put this shit in peak. Just cause of Gopta. Yup, it's a bias. I know in terms of animation, in terms of everything else, like, like... It probably shouldn't be peak. But I have such a heavy bias against people like Gopta getting the recognition that they probably doesn't deserve. <laughs> and got the fusion scene with Ranga, sick. Masayuki just doing nothing and getting away with it. And then... Uh, gives the win to Gopta. I love it. Gopta is the Elite Four member. Now... I hear the Elite Four is actually a poor translation because we're getting it from Crunchyroll. I think it should be more of like the Heavenly Four Kings. What is it? What's the actual title? The Shtenno. It's like the Heavenly Kings or something, right? I think that's what it is, but hey, we're in the Elite Four or the Four Heavenly Kings. We're getting more training for Milim in the Labyrinth and now they're setting up the Labyrinth to be the next like last two episodes of Tennis Story Season 3, I think. There was some interesting El Mischia stuff. With Gazelle and them bailing us out of the currency issue we have, the cash flow restriction. Diablo had a very interesting scene with Elmicia also because she was like threatened almost. Or she was concerned that like, yo, Rimuru, you know that's a primordial. You summoned this shit? You sure you got this shit on lock? So that was interesting to kind of hype up Diablo there. But other than that, the tournament are concluded in a magnificent way that I honestly did not expect. 
Masayuki didn't do anything throughout the whole tournament, and I guess it makes sense. He is basically king from One Punch Man. I thought that he has some sort of competency in fighting, but it's seemingly he's just an average dude. Super average has no, well, maybe not no, but little to no combat skills. He just gets away with everything, and he's now submitted himself to Rimuru, so everything is good. Everything is good. I still wanted to see Rimuru versus Masayuki, but it is what it is. Now, let's talk about Isekai Shikaku. We're back onto the main plot. I think it was definitely a great episode. It was. I love the previous last two episodes too, but there was, those were kind of self-contained stories, which had little to no meaning for the future stuff, except the delinquent scorpion guy who actually showed up as their mode of transportation. But we're finally back into the main plot. We're going against the new fallen angel of... I forgot what it was actually called, and it was not like a sin, like not a seven deadly sin. Misery, right? Misery showed up. And there was like a connection between her and the priest guy who we've met before, the alcoholic priest. And then there was even more interesting background between him and an old lady that lives here. But I think they might actually be lovers. I thought it might have been like a, a guardian that treated like that, like helped him grow up. But he's like an elf. He's pretty old, right? So maybe I got baited by just like the look difference and... You know, I think that uh, Sensei also called her Ojo-sama, or a lady or something, so... I feel like they're cooking with something there. But overall, I thought it was a great episode. Makin heroine, bro. Nah, Oshinoko first. Oshinoko is back from hiatus. And? It's probably here or here. Now let's think about this. What happened the most recent Oshinoko episode? Do I even have the episodes? No, I don't. I think it was Ruby, Memcho, Kana, Idol Comeback, trying to make a new special song, not rather than just old copies. They're setting up a new arc at Miyazaki, which is where the hospital where Sensei used to work at. Sorry, Aqua used to work at, right? Aqua Himekawa stuff seemingly got settled, but I don't think so. I'm not buying the dad and the mom being dead from double suicide. No way. Hell no. The hair color, yeah, I get genetics can fucking skip a generation, but I don't believe it, bro. It just makes no sense for us to have this anticlimactic ending with the mystery. Fuck no. I get, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that the actual dad planned and executed double death because those two, I don't know. Maybe the dad has some really secret relationship with Himikawa's mom and didn't like Bo and getting cheated on or some shit like that. Maybe that's the case. Himikawa's actual dad and mom, mom had some sort of secret relations with, you know, Aqua's dad and that's what happened. I could totally see that happening. But 99.8% match. Different mom, same dad. So Himikawa is now hinted as being an illegitimate, ch illegitimate child, right? He is. Himekawa is now hinted, it's implied, because if we're gonna go with the assumption that the double suicide and the dad involved in it was not the real dad, and the genetic reports still match, it has to be that like Himekawa doesn't actually know his real dad. It has to be that way. Anyways, that's what we're going with. We had a new character at the end too, that's right. Some sort of like white haired girl with like red eyes. I'm not sure what how she's gonna play into the story, but it was an interesting episode, and I think I can put it here for sure. Next up. Power of God. I'm sorry, man. I'm not sorry. And you shouldn't be sorry either. If you loved Tower of God, you would also be just as upset because you'd be coming from such a place of passion. My God, bro. Like, what the fuck were the fights, bro? I have this shit right here, bro. Let's look at it. Bro. This shit is the most mid-garbage. Like, the fights between Novik and Ran. Novik and... Because, like, then here's the interesting thing. When I see these frames, it looks good. They genuinely look great. Frame for frame. But the animation is, like, slow motion, bro. There's no fucking impact. 
And God, bro, Kevin Penkin's soundtrack is going crazy and hard carrying the show, but it's not enough. It just simply cannot carry this garbage heap show that we even call fucking animation. Bro, Novik and Ram being knocked down without any scratches is so fucking hilarious. I mean, all these fights are just like nothing happening. The stuff with the Rachel scene was pretty good, but I feel like Rachel is hard carrying the scene. Rachel doing his heinous shit to Don, I think is hard carrying the scene, bro. It's not the studio that made the scene good. It's simply Rachel being a maniacal bitch that did this scene good, man. And like the fights again, it's just like, there's no fucking impact. Everything is slow motion wonky. And even if the story is amazing, when you have these important fights get butchered, these key fucking moments, man. <laughs> oh, man. You think that we're gonna go to the workshop battle and be fine? Do you actually think? Well, if they show us, and here's the interesting thing. The interesting thing with this is the fact that actually hold on, there's a fucking God damn, I gotta ban this guy again. Ugh, that's like the 13th, 13th account that I banned of this. The interesting thing with this is we it's not like we didn't see them doing proper animation season one and season two. Sorry, season two, I mean. First couple episodes. The fights were decent. They were. It wasn't this wonky and slow. It's so like, I have seen them put out slightly above average fight animations in the beginning. But what the fuck are they doing now? So now I'm thinking, because like if we from the beginning never saw any potential of them doing fights, then I'd completely give up on the workshop arc. But they have shown us that. So now we're all coping. <laughs> and we're all just hoping that, hey, if we get to the workshop arc, maybe everything will be great. Maybe it's just, ugh. I don't know. I don't fucking know, man. Also, just a little lesson. Let's go to kick right now and let's look at the clips. Are they creating this shit right now? Yeah, they are. Look at this shit. These fucking, these bots, literally, Rabbi Rothschild. They, they basically create random fucking clips and then they link their uh, Discord or different advertisement shit. Which is so frustrating because like Kick has no moderation for these kind of bots. And there's no option to turn clips off. So like, <laughs> I gotta keep battling with these goddamn fucking bots on Kick every day, man. <laughs> Please, put me back to the Twitch. Please. I think we're like, uh, how many days? The day that shall not be mentioned was about like five days ago, so... We're nearly there. We're 40% of the way there, guys. We're 40% of the way there from getting back into Twitch's good grace. But Tower of God, I think that it should be minimum mid, if not worse. Like, I feel like it should be Dookie. Is it, was it mid or was it Dookie? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, mid or Dookie? It, it, <laughs> Dookie is really fucking bad. Mid is like, eh. And the episodes I'm watching, it's not horrendous. The art does look good it's just when it moves it looks bad the direction is garbage but i just ah fuck bro ah ah hurts to see what they've done with this show but we'll finish it and we'll see what we're gonna do with you know the workshop art now this i believe is the best anime of this season i do now, is it peak? I don't know. Let's think about this for a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. It, it might be down here. But, like, let's think about what Maki and Heroin did last episode. It was wrapping up Komari's arc. Komari is this girl that is very socially inept, has no friends, is very introverted and shy and nervous. And she found a place that she can maybe call home at the Literature Club, right? And Koto and the prince, the, the prez, they invited her in, they took care of her, and everything was fine. But Komari got cooked, because obviously Koto and the prez have something going. But Komari still confessed. Komari continues to move forward. Komari works so hard to the point of exhaustion, takes care of her siblings. And there's a lot of Komari shit that we've seen that's been building up until now. And it was a beautiful closure as she accepts Senpai's leaving. And her being a big girl. And there's still Nuku, right? So, it was an amazing, like, is it a coming-of-age story? Maybe. But I love how they're handling Komari. Way better than the lemon ending. Because Mitsuki, fuck that guy. 
something about that just still pisses me off. But I love, you know, Komari ending. There was also great moments with the separate characters like the school prez, right? The super aura Giga Chats uh, prez, the zombie girl. A1 pictures again is just... Anytime, it, it's, it's the worst thing I can do for myself is watching an A1 Pictures anime, then watching this afterwards. It's just like, the difference. The difference in passion. The difference in love that they have for the shows. The difference in sheer talent. It is night and day. When I watch Tower of God, not that I... Again, it's the studio's fault. It's not Tower of God's fault. When I watch this anime made from the studio, it's just like, bro, it's not even anime, bro. You can't even call it fucking anime when I've witnessed shit like this. Was the episode itself peak? It might have been. It might have been. It was... <sighs> it, I, I feel like it should be here. Yeah. I think it should be here. I have a huge bias for Gopta stuff. I think that this episode was a fucking amazing. Roche Daddy is cooking, Sozo Shinoko. These all these shows had a great episode and they were back. Failure frame is just like, yeah. Tower of God, unfortunate. But that's pretty much it. Maybe there's too many in great. Maybe, maybe like they should get brought down here. I don't know. There's too many in great. Maybe some of them should go up, but I feel like Perry was a great episode. All of these were great episodes. Par Failure frame, I think, was kind of. A notch below. And Tower of God, it's just, they're not fucking animating, so that's pretty much it. This is this week's worth of tier lists for summer 2024 based on my personal enjoyment of the show. And if you don't like this, go make your own tier list, pussy. Then I'm gonna show up there and say your tier list whack too.